Praise the Lord, my brothers and sisters. I have an amazing word that I want to share with you guys tonight. The Lord just put this on my heart. I'm going to wait for a couple of you to log into this live, but man, I feel the presence of God and this word is going to encourage many of you. Um, it's going to maybe step on a couple of people's toes, but I know the Lord gave me this tonight. And so one of the things that I've said uh, today was that some people, they get love for being fake while others, they get judged for being real. And the Lord has seen all of that stuff and he's very aware. And so I begin to think about all the different messages that God has given me over this season that we've been in lockdown. And one of the things from the beginning was to repent, to refocus. He was going to refresh. He was going to replenish. He was going to rebuild. He was going to restore. He was going to repair. He was going to remake. And then he was going to send his people out again. And so before I even get into what the Lord gave me, I want to show you guys something. So some of you guys know what this is. This is a selfie stick right here, right? And what the Lord told me is some people in the church, they've had their hand right on the controls and it's like god can't move unless i'm in the picture right so they're they're kind of doing this with the church right it's, it's i gotta be in the picture if god moves it's gotta be about me right i i want people to see i want people to know and you know what i'm gonna block other people right from being in the frame i don't want them to be in the frame and and god is not pleased with the church politics and that's what a lot of people are doing Instead of putting God at the center and putting the focus on God, it's no, look at me. I got to be at the center. And if anybody else comes in, I don't care if they're anointed. I don't care if God can use them. If it's not me, then they're not going to fit in this little box. And then here's also the problem is that they try to fit God inside of this little box. And God is so much bigger and so much greater than their little box. And so they put God, look at this, this box if you really look at it, right, I'm going to bring it back some. It's a small box. And the only thing that can fit in this box is my brain. The only thing that can fit in this box is my ideas. The only thing that can fit in this box is my way of seeing things, my way of doing things. And the Lord is saying, I'm so much bigger than your box. I'm so much bigger than what you had in mind. I'm so much bigger than your religion and rules. I'm so much bigger. And if you don't allow me to break out of this box in your life, if you don't allow me to break out of the box of what you had in mind, you will always be limited and restricted to this small box. If you sit there and be religious, if you sit there and be boxed in with fear, if you sit there and be boxed in with doubt, you will never get to see everything that I have for you because you won't let me out of the box. Okay, now check this out. This is the verse that God gave me in prayer today. Matthew 8, 21, 23. And another one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, suffer me first to go and bury my father. But Jesus said unto him, follow me and let the dead bury their dead. And when he was entered into the ship, man, I feel the Holy Spirit. His disciples followed him. Jesus, those words might sound harsh. He said, let the dead bury the dead. And I said, Lord, why did you give me that verse? And he said, son, in this season that we're going into, what I'm about to do, some people are not going to get it. Some people are not going to like it. Some people are not going to be willing to move when I say move. Some people are not going to uh, surrender when I say surrender. And so they are dead spiritually. He said, look, stop wrestling with dead things and dead people that hold you back from what I'm trying to do. It's not saying forget the dead and the spiritually dead and those who are not saved, but the ones in the church. This is talking about saved folks, people who follow God. He said, stop messing with the dead folks. Let the dead bury the dead. Stop arguing with them. Stop trying to prove yourself to them. Stop trying to get on their side. Stop trying to get in the cliques in the church. Stop trying to navigate the church politics, hoping that you'll get an opportunity to use your gift, hoping that you'll get an opportunity to serve. The Lord says, let the dead bury the dead and follow me. Whatever I told you to do, you do it. Whatever I told you to be, you be it. Wherever I told you to go, you go. 
stop sitting there trying to convince dead folks to live. Stop sitting there and trying to, you know, uh, belittle yourself and try to not be true to what God has called you to do because you don't want to make no waves. He said, let the dead bury the dead. Now, this also is going to apply to some of you with relationships. You've been sitting there in relationships with friends and boyfriends and girlfriends, and it ain't going nowhere. The Lord is saying, look, if you want what I have, you right now have to let the dead bury the dead. All right. If they don't want to choose life, if they don't want to go, if they don't want to get on the boat, if they don't want to get with the program, let the dead bury the dead. You leave it alone and follow me. Then the second verse he gave me, Matthew 10, 14, he said, and whosoever shall not receive you nor hear your words when ye depart out of the house or city, shake off the dust of your feet. And let me tell you something. I don't, I don't want to preach this in a way that comes across rebellious, but the Lord is saying, look, some of you need to shake the dust off your feet. You're in the wrong church. Some of you need to let the dead bury the dead because you're in the wrong church. They're not getting with the move of God. They're not getting with the flow of God. They're not getting with the program of God. God allowed this season right here for the church to repent, uh, repent because he's trying to correct some things. And some people are going to go and do the same old stuff that they've been doing. They're going to get in the way of the move of God with their religious mindsets. They're going to box them in. Remember what I showed you at the beginning of the video. The only thing that can fit in this little box right here is my mind. There's no room for God to move because I'm so full of myself. That's all you can see in the picture. And some churches are going to go right back to that because if the move doesn't go through them, nah, well, we just can't have it. So the Lord saying, shake the dust off your feet and go to where they're going to receive you. Check this out. Another one. Luke 2, 47 through 50. And all that heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. And when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said unto him, Son, why hast thou dealt with us? Behold, thy father and I have sought thee sorrowing. We were crying. We were looking for you. And he said unto them, How is it that ye sought me? Wish ye not that I must be about my father's business? While y'all are crying, I'm about my father's business. While y'all was worried, I'm about my father's business. And some of you, just like I'm saying, you got to let the dead bury the dead. You got to shake the dust off your feet. Man, some people are going to cry. Some people are going to whine. Some people are going to think that you're lost. They're going to think that you're out of place, but you're not out of place. You're doing what God has called you to do. You're about your father's business. Some of you are going to have to cut ties with people, cut ties with churches. And you know what? They're going to say, oh, this one is backsliding. Oh, this one is lost. But you you're, they're going to say that you're off and they're going to make a big deal about it. But the truth is you're not off. You're being about your father's business. And whether or not some people agree, whether or not some people cheer you on, whether or not some people support you, you have to do what God has called you to do. Matthew 5, 14, 16. Ye are the light of the world, a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Number one, you don't need to be putting your light under a bushel, and don't let nobody else put your light under a bushel. There's some of you, you You've been waiting uh, to just be used by God and you think, man, it has to go through the church or I have to get this person's approval. And the Lord is saying, why are you hiding your light? Why are you waiting to only shine your light in the church? I gave you the light and I want you to shine now. I want you to go to the dark places and shine. See, we got a lot of light trying to shine in the light of the church, but not enough light trying to go out into the darkness and shine. He's saying, why don't you go out to that street corner and shine? Why don't you shine on your job? Why don't you shine with your family? Why don't you shine in your home? Why don't you shine while feeding the homeless? Why don't you shine on the street doing outreach? Why don't you shine in the hospitals? Why don't you shine in the dark places? I gave you a light and I want you to shine. Don't you dare cover it and don't let anyone else cover it. Some of you need to stop being fake humble. 
God gave you something that's bright. God gave you a testimony. God gave you a ministry, but you're sitting there and you're just toning it down because you want to be pleasing to the people because you want to get in with the politics. And the Lord is saying, I'm looking to do something radical. So here we go. Let the dead bury the dead. Mm, if they don't want it, if they don't want to move in it, if they're not hungry, if they're not desperate for the move of God, let the dead bury the dead and follow Jesus. Then he says, whoever shall not receive you nor hear your words. If they don't want to hear you, stop trying to prove yourself. Stop trying to argue. Stop wasting time trying to win them over and shake the dust off your feet. If they come crying about it, if they come tell you you're out of place and you're out of position, just like Jesus told his mother and his father, he said, I'm about my father's uh, business. I'm in the right position. You think that I was lost. You think that I was off, but I'm right where I need to be. Matthew 5, 14. Ye are a light of the world, a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hid. Ooh. Don't tone down your light for nobody. I feel that thing. I feel like God is talking to me. Don't tone down your light for anybody. Man, I feel the Holy Ghost strong. The Lord says, I want you to shine. I made you to shine. I made you to be a reflection of me. Ooh, hallelujah. First Peter 4, 14, 19 lets us know that judgment begins at the house of God. The Lord has allowed this season for the church to rebuild, to repent, to be resent, because there's some stuff going on that is getting in the way of what God wants to do. It's a lot of this going on. It's all about me. There's no room for nobody else. It's just it's just me and my crew, me and my clique. That's all that can fit in here. And we we made this little box. And if you don't fit in our little box, then you know what? Well, we just we just can't use you. And the Lord is saying, I'm bigger than your box. I'm bigger than your organization. I'm bigger than what you had in mind. And if you don't get with the program, you are going to miss it. Some people, unfortunately, who they're going to come out of this COVID-19 thing and go right back to how they was doing church. Oh, man, I can see it clear as day. It's about to be so beautiful when we come out of this. But the sad part of it, there's going to be so many people in the church who are bitter because they couldn't get over themselves. I've been saying this for the last couple of weeks. Many people have a relationship with church, but not a relationship with God. They've got a relationship with the pastor. They've got a relationship with the choir. They're clicked up, but they're, and they think because they're clicked up with the pastor and they're clicked up in the church that they're right with God. And the Lord says, just because you're right with the pastor doesn't mean that you're right with me. Just because you, just because you popular in the church don't mean that you right with me. Oh, thank you, Jesus. We worship you right now. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Oh, we love you, Jesus. Lord, right now, forgive us, Father, if we've boxed you in. That's what I feel in my spirit. Every individual that is watching this live, forgive us, Lord, if we've boxed you in. Forgive us, Lord, if we've limited you. 
Forgive us, Lord, if we've gotten in the way of how you want to move and what you want to do because we've been leaning to our own understanding or because we've been trying to please people or because we've been trying to fit in, Lord God. Forgive us. Forgive us, Lord, right now in the name of Jesus. Help us to flow in you. Help us to surrender to your will. Help us to be sensitive in the spirit, Lord, that we can hear from you. And that when we come out of this COVID-19 season, just like the children of Israel, Father, they went in slaves while the death angel passed. But when they were locked in the house and they came out after they made the sacrifice and the blood was smeared on the door, they came out free, sons and daughters of God, on their way to the promised land. In the name of Jesus, set our minds free, set our hearts free. In Jesus' name. I love you guys. Be blessed. Have a wonderful evening in Jesus' name.